Threaded inserts are such an elegant way to add strong connection points to your 3D printed parts. You instantly get a properly formed thread that you can tighten and undo hundreds of times, and it's still going to be just as good as when you first installed the insert. Recently, I took a look at some heat set options and tested how easy to use they were and how strong they turned out. You can check out that video linked in the description. And I think that was a great starting point to jump off and explore a bit deeper. Today, I want to explore three more aspects to these inserts in more detail. First, was I using enough infill and shell thickness? And where is that crossover point where adding more material to your part is just extra weight that does make the connection point any stronger? Then, what about inserts that maybe aren't meant to be used for 3D printed parts? Woodworking insets, uh, thread repair kits, riv nuts, prong nuts. We'll test those. And lastly, do the results that we get with PLA transfer over to other materials as well? I grab the best types of inserts and retest them in PTG and polycarbonate. Of course, I've already done all the tests at this point, and the results are actually super helpful in understanding how these inserts work and how they interact with the printed part. So let's get going right after a message from today's sponsor. Do you ever struggle with moving your files between CAD, 3D scanning, and 3D printing? Mesh Inspector imports all major 3D printing formats like STL, OBJ, or even STEP files, and provides advanced mesh repair and manipulation tools. Use the one-click mesh healer for high-quality mesh repairs, or compare CAD, scan, and repair geometry with the display deviation map feature to make sure your parts come out exactly as you intended. Streamline your 3D printing prep with Mesh Inspector and get 10% off with code made with layers at the link below. Okay, so for these parts, I grabbed some fresh PLA and I'm printing all these parts in sequence, which means it doesn't matter if I'm printing four or just one at a time, they always get printed at the exact same speed and the layers always have the exact same time to cool down before the next one gets added. So first set of test parts, we've got one set that is going from 10 to 100% infill, printed in both orientations, laying flat and standing up. And then the other set is printed at 25% infill, going from 0.9 to 3.6 millimeters uh, wall thickness, which is one to four shells. These parts are all for M5 inserts, and I'm gonna use two of the AliExpress inserts and one from the CNC Kitchen short types. These are basically identical, but I just don't know if I have enough for the AliExpress ones. So that was 54 of the heat set inserts pulled out and both with the shell thickness and with the increased infill, eventually you get to a point where you no longer have the part failing, cracking, coming out in pieces along with the insert, but instead the insert itself pulls out of the material. Once you reach that point, it just stops mattering how strong exactly the printed part is, uh, because now the weakest link is how well the insert can sort of claw into the print. You can get to that point from a reasonable starting point. Uh, both by adding more shells or by adding more infill. For the fixed 25% infill, four shells was the point where that part itself was stronger than the insert. And going up and down in infill density with those four shells, 20% infill actually is right at the edge and there's no more gains going more than 40% infill. Like all the other tests in this video, this was all done with M5 size inserts, but I would think the general trend should also be true for smaller or larger inserts. Also, it turns out it really didn't matter whether the part was printed flat or standing on edge. The maximum strength was basically identical and so was the crossover point. So for the rest of the tests, I'm using 40% infill with six shells, also 2.7 millimeter wall thickness up top and bottom, which is one setting beyond where I started seeing the part being stronger than the insert. In the coming tests, only one of the insert types will end up breaking the part itself. So I think these settings were good for testing just the insert. But keep in mind that in practice, if you transfer all your forces through a normal threaded insert, going with about 30% infill and something like four shells is still going to be way more than enough. If you're that close to loading a part to failure, you should probably beef up your part by using a less strained geometry first. 
But with these newfound optimum print settings and some brutal tests coming up, uh, I wasn't quite sure about the dinky printed sample holder anymore. And since JOC 3DP had already offered to let me try out their CNC machining service when I needed some parts, I felt like this was a good time to beef up the sample holder. If this fails now, then things have seriously gone wrong. Okay, so that looks sufficiently reinforced. Did I go overboard? Nah, never. All right, let's have a look at the contenders. And the first one is these, which is not actually a insert for plastics or 3D printed parts at all. These are riv nuts or rivet nuts in long, and these are made from steel. These are zinc coated, and they have a thread all the way in there. The way they're meant to be used is you drop them into a sheet metal or, or any other thin walled metal part. You drill a hole that matches the outside diameter, you drop these in, and then you take these special pliers and you pull these tight like a rivet. In a perfect world, you would use aluminum inserts for aluminum parts, but this is, I think, enough to demonstrate. You can create a very strong thread in a very thin walled part. Now, because I don't know how well these inserts are actually going to work in plastic, I created two different sample parts. One where we can use the rivet nuts as intended with a bit of space in the back for them to expand, and one that is an interference fit where we can use them like a traditional melt-in threaded insert. Now, because I didn't want to split our test samples before we even started the testing, uh, I didn't set these rivet nuts as hard as you would into a piece of metal. So they ended up performing quite inconsistently and averaged out at about 1.6 newton meters. And even though these rivet nuts have absolutely no texture to grip onto the printed part, they still performed surprisingly well at around 1.2 newton meters on average. Next up are these zinc alloy furniture inserts. And these are made for wood, as you can tell, they have a bit of a serrated edge, but they are made from a extremely cheap and brittle zinc alloy. So the first time I tried to thread this in, just with the regular hex key, uh, the insert split right in half with just a bit of torque. So I reprinted it, now they screw in nicely. And let me tell you, modeling that tapered thread infusion Man, that was a pain. But with just a printed thread all the way through, these actually go in quite nicely now. Um, they seat flush and there's a bit of that ratcheting feel to it. Um, they feel very satisfying to install unless you crack them. Originally, I wanted to use these as well. These are known as the brand name Rampa Muffe here in Germany. These are essentially the same thing. They have a coarse thread on the outside and a fine metric thread on the inside. Um, but these are a lot stronger because they are made from a galvanized steel alloy. Uh, same hex drive in the top, but the problem with these is because I'm testing all in M5, this assortment only went down to M6, so I can't really do a straight comparison with these. So we're sticking with these zinc alloy ones for now. These may actually grip into the printed part a bit better because they have uh, a bit deeper threads and teeth on the outside. But even though these inserts themselves are quite brittle, because they engage more of the printed part, they still manage to match the performance of the heat set inserts at around 2 Newton meters. Now, this is the one that I'm sort of worried about. Uh, these are pronged T-nuts, I guess that's what that translates to. And what's special about these is that they actually go in from behind, and as you know, that can cause quite a bit of damage. Because these have that large flange in the back that essentially we're going to have to pull all the way through our printed part to get something to fail. I don't think it's going to be the metal insert that's going to fail in this case. I think we're just going to straight crack our printed part in half. But thankfully our test is reinforced, so that shouldn't be a problem for our setup. Now, these just slotted into a perfectly matching cutout on the back that I printed in one go. Uh, the problem with this is, of course, the downside here is that you will need access to the back of your part. So this is your forward-facing side. You can't just insert them from the front. You're going to have to be able to reach around and insert them from the back, and you're going to need a piece of material that is the right thickness. If you do have that, though, I think this is going to be one of the strongest connections you can make. And as expected, the performance of these prong nuts was impressive. They cracked our test sample straight in half and actually messed up the screw thread as well. So when I tried to test the self-tapping inserts next, they just pushed out because the thread was no good anymore. 
These inserts, even though they are dead simple, are absolutely no joke. And moving away from the woodworking part, we've got two more types of inserts that are meant for metal repairs. And this is an insert known as a helicoil. And as you can see, this is not a solid metal insert. It's just a specially formed wire wrapped to sort of form a thread repair. So if you have a messed up thread, you can drill it out, retap it for the helicoil size and thread this in. And let me tell you, these were quite the pain to get a good fit on. So I actually printed a fitting piece that I went up and down in sizes. And what I later realized is that yes, I was modeling for the correct pitch, but as you insert the screw, these individual coils aren't meant to keep touching each other, but they get pulled apart as you thread it in. So that of course relies on having an accurate thread already formed in the part you want to repair. And as an additional downside to this uh, wire style insert is that only the part that the screw actually engages with is gonna support some load. So if we're only partially threaded in, this bottom piece is not actually gonna to contribute to the strength of our thread. You're supposed to use a special inserting tool that grabs onto that tab in the end, but what works just as well is just a pair of tweezers that holds onto the tab and you can very easily just thread it in like so. And after figuring out the perfect fitment, these helicoil style inserts actually did quite well for it being reused in the absolutely wrong application. They ended up at 2.4 newton meters on average, which is quite good, but I think it is also being helped by the fact that we do have quite a bit of thread engagement from our test screw. If you don't go in all the way on these inserts, they do lose quite a bit of their strength. And then lastly, we have these. These are self-tapping, so they have a different metric thread on the inside and on the outside. Um, but these are made from one continuous piece of metal. They have that bit of thread cutting geometry at the end. Uh, and essentially, you just take your screw, you screw it in, you thread it into your part, and that should give you an insert. Uh, however, because we're going into plastic here, um, I did print the threads and modeled them to be sort of accurate. And now we can just insert these uh, and they're gonna form the thread the rest of the way. And then we can back out the screw and we've got our finished thread. I really like how easy these are to set. I mean, I guess you could just thread them into a straight board hole, but yeah, modeling and printing the thread geometry isn't that hard and I think it just gives you a better result overall. And because our effective diameter is a lot larger than many of the other inserts, these self-tapping inserts performed quite good at over 3.3 newton meters on average. As long as they stay in place, that is. Some of these self-tapping inserts had to be convinced into place with a bit of clear thread lock. These inserts all did pretty well. As a reference, the short M5 heat set inserts averaged out at about 2.26 newton meters from the previous tests. The only inserts that were significantly weaker uh, are the rivnuts, both riveted and used as a heat set, which pulled out at 1.2 and 1.6 Nm. The little expansion from riveting them didn't really seem to do much. Um, with that, they're still usable in a lot of cases, but since the inserts are pretty large and pretty heavy, they would rarely be my first choice. Also, the thread on this one isn't particularly good. Uh, they're cheap though, so they've got that going for them. The zinc furniture inserts did okay at 2.03 newton meters average, and since they're also pretty cheap and they're super easy to install, uh, they are definitely worth considering. The helicoil style repair wire inserts did even better, but honestly, I don't think they're a good choice for 3D printed parts. You need an extremely precise printed fit for them, and installing them can be pretty fiddly. And on top of that, they are somewhat expensive, so overall, they don't get a recommendation from me here. For these self-tapping style inserts, we're starting to see significant improvements in strength compared to the smaller diameter uh, heat set inserts, you know, the standard ones, CNC kitchen or from elsewhere. Again, engage more of the printed part and you get a stronger connection. I like these a lot. And if printing the external thread is too much effort for you, you can even just print a plain hole, beef up the wall thickness, and the insert will cut its own thread. No special tools required, um, which should also make for a tighter fit that keeps them from coming undone. These get a thumbs up. And of course, if you need to take it to the extreme, the prong nuts will do it for you. I don't really see any way how these could fail before the printed part fails. Um, and the strength 
you know, obviously completely depends on how beefy you printed your, your 3D printed part. But they do require access from the back of the threaded hole. This one's actually on backwards, they go on like that. Um, so they still take up a lot of space like that, and the insert itself is rather large. So yes, I think these are a great option for really reinforcing 3D printed parts, but you can't always use them. And then lastly, I also wanted to see how well these results would transfer to other materials. So I reprinted three of the samples in PTG and in the Prusament PC blend, polycarbonate obviously being a very high temperature, high strength, high toughness material, which can do miracles mechanically, but it does so at the expense of being quite hard to print. And it is also somewhat flexible. And then PTG, you kind of don't know what you're gonna get because uh, every manufacturer does sort of their own thing. And depending on how you store this and how you print this, it's also going to behave quite differently. And just like the PLA parts that we just tested, this is also Prusament, uh, which did warp just a little bit because my basement where I'm printing stuff is pretty cold. The polycarbonate I did in an enclosure, but yeah, let's get these tested and see how well these stack up versus PLA and whether they perform similarly. Okay, this was really interesting because as it turns out, there are sort of two material properties uh, that seem to change the results here. The inserts in PTG consistently stand up to less torque and consequently a lower pullout force. None of these started twisting, they all started pulling out. While in polycarbonate, the heat set was weaker, the rift nuts were about the same, and the self-tapping insert was significantly stronger. How I would explain this is that the heat set and the rift nut fail by stretching the material and slipping out, while the threaded self-tapping insert actually needs to tear through the material to fail. Polycarbonate and PTG are a bit softer uh, than PLA, so it makes sense that it would be easier for inserts to slip out, but then polycarbonate has really good material strength. So the self-tapping insert that needs to tear through the material to get out actually has a much harder time doing so. So keep that in mind when choosing your inserts for your prints. If you're printing with a less rigid material, PTG, polycarbonate, ABS, engagement depth in the print is absolutely vital. But if you use PLA or a fiber reinforced material that gets rigidity from the fibers, a heat set insert will also work equally well. So as always, the answer is, uh, it depends. But I hope at least now you've got a better understanding for what it actually depends on. I'll be stocking up on these self-tapping inserts. Um, these are my favorite from the test for sure. Um, if you want to grab any of the options I tested today, as always, the links for that uh, are in the video description. If you learned something, consider a like, subscribe, membership, Patreon, share. Keep on making, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.